Hello class, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over the string program. Um, so this is about string methods and the string object class. So on box we have the following things. What we're going to be looking at is the string uh, javadocs box note. We're not going to be going over the worksheet in this lesson. We're also going to be using the, the string game more methods, which is the most amount of code on a Java game. So I'm going to download this and import it over to my BlueJ. So I import over by dragging over the string game more methods code, which I'm going to compile. And we see that it works, so I'm going to open up the code. Let's go over the code real quick. First thing that we have is the scanner class. What this does is it creates the scanner objects, which it is allowed to get the user input. So when I want to get user input, I need to use a in.next line or a in.next int and next line to burn the end line character. So all this line of code does is it makes it so that I can use these scanner objects. I create the public class and open up the void main. I create my basic variables to control the whole program, which this is the word that the user is working on. And these are just start and end variables that are used throughout the program. And then the string stop no creates the variable to make it so that I can either go on or repeat a certain method in the program. And then I create the scanner class, and then I begin. So the get chars method takes in four different parameters, and it returns nothing. And by returning nothing, when you make the, the call, see this line of code right here? It returns nothing. And by returning nothing, I can't actually put it inside a system dot dot print line because I get an error message because this it doesn't even have a string value. It literally returns nothing, so nothing can be outputted. So when I run this, what happens is the DST, which is just a variable for the character array, the character array actually is just a pointer. And what I mean by a pointer is it's a memory location that points to an array of multiple values. And each value in this is a character. So inside here, I would have A, B, D, J, K, L, T. So this would be the character array. And because this is a pointer, when I pass in the pointer, what I'm doing is I'm creating another pointer that points the same data. But if I change this to a Z, the old pointer is still pointing to the same memory location, so it sees the Z value and not the A value. Even though I'm changing the new pointer, the value of the new pointer using this array, it still changes the old array because they're pointing to a location in memory and not a value in memory. That's why this can be a void instead of returning a string DST, which is pretty impressive. So what this get chars does is it says for the word that's being used begin at this position and end at this position copy all the characters into this array starting at this position for this array. So I'm going to compile and run it. If I were to pass in the string hello my friend starting position let's say it's array positions so if I want to do my friend, I would say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the length of the string is 0, 1, 2, 3, 13, 14. So the length is 15 because the last array position plus 1. And what is the starting point of my character array? I'm just going to say 2 to show you that it doesn't do this beginning one. And then right here I have 2 and it creates my numbers. Now these are actually ASCII values for the characters associated with my friend. So when we look up the ASCII table, I have the number 109, 121, and 32. 109 should be M, 129 is Y, Ooh, not 129, 121 is Y, and then 32 is space. So this is my and then friend, friend would be these and then that's it I copy over so I create my variables that match my parameters in the method I set default values to these just in case and then what I do is I ask the user for input 
what this line here does is it gets the input of the string. So the string that I'm so this would be the hello my friend. Then I'm creating a array of size word length, which I should actually change this, but it's it's fine. It works right now so that I can assign the value of word into the character array and still have enough spots for it. Then what I'm doing is I want to this is the starting point. So this should this would be the number that gives me the m position in the in the word array. And please realize what it does is it gets the integer and assigns it to source begin, which is one of my parameters. And then it reads in the in.next line, which what that does is it eats the end line character. When I run the program and say hello, and then I put in a number, it's reading that number, but I can't give it that number without pressing the enter key. So what I have to do is I have to press the enter key, and what I'm passing in is I'm passing in a number and a string, and the string has the end line character. I have to eat that end line character before giving it another number. By doing so, this is what takes care of the end line character, which is most definitely required every time you read in an integer. I again ask for another integer, so I have another end line character. And then I ask for another integer, again, telling the user which integer I'm reading in so that they understand. I use my debug code, which you should be commenting out when you turn in the program. You don't have to. Um, I allow that you don't have to because it's just the same. And it helps me see everything as well. But what this does is it tells me these are the values of the variables, and then I can by hand calculate what the output should be. So I see the output by hand, and I see why the output is that with this. This line right here, what it does is it makes it so that I can visually see what's being passed in to the method call when I call the method call. Because I don't see this happening, but I can see this happening. So again, it's just another way to check the answer. This right here is basically an advanced for loop just to output the DST array because this doesn't return anything. The ones you're going to be using, using will usually return something that can be used inside the system.out.print line, so you will not need to do this. And then again, we ask to see if we can run the program again. And then this loops just in case. After that, I reset the value to stop to no so that it continues on to the next one. And then I reset these, and again, what am I doing? I'm using the, the method region matches with these default values I'm resetting the other string to a basic value that I'll never see because Hillary is spelled wrong not because she's not president but anyways we keep on going and reset all the starting ones so everything I reset I need to get again from the user so I'm getting in the word I'm getting in the position I'm getting in the other position and then I'm getting in the other start position and then I'm getting in another integer. I'm outputting all those integer values. And then what I'm doing here is I'm outputting what it, the method call will look like. And then I'm outputting the actual method value. And then I ask to see if the user wants to do it again. Now what you have to realize is when we click on javadocs.oracle and we got to double click on the link, we want to scroll down all the way to S and then T. It's alphabetical. And then R, I. Click on string. And then we want to scroll down past the constructor summary to the method summaries. And all the methods that I'm asking you to do are listed right here. So inside the Java docs, what you need to do is they are, there are five categories. One, two, three, four, five. You need to pick one and any one from each one and then implement them into your program. Now what I want you to realize is you basically have a string, an integer, two integers, a string and an integer and two strings. What I want you to see is inside the string one, I already have something that takes in three integers. Can you modify this to take in only one integer? Can you modify this to only take in two integers? Yes, you can. Then you have a method that calls in three integers and a string. Can you modify this to only take in an integer and a string, and can you modify it to only take in a string? Yes, you can. 
And then can you duplicate this to make it so that it reads in two strings? Yes, you can. So all the code and the first two methods that I give you in this give you the code to make this work. All you have to do is change the values. You can go down further, and as you see, you already have something that takes in one string. You already have something that takes in one integer. You just have to modify that to make it work for your program. Now, the nice thing is you have the Javadocs right here. If you go through and when you click on, let's say, um, concat, which I already did, if you don't understand this, what I recommend doing is copying the method, opening up Google and saying concat Java. And not only concat Java, make sure you put in string with a capital S in there, and then you can see tutorials point is a good one, stack overflow is a good one, um, Java T point is a good one. All of these are basically good examples of code. So I'm going to click on the tutorials point. And it is another basic version of the Java docs. But what they give you here is example code and example output. And then you can see how the methods were run. And they also put it, they word it a little bit differently as well. So you're going to use all these resources to make this all work. And I want you to pay attention to the parameters and also the return type as it may affect some of these. I didn't check all the return types on these. But when your program is done, what you should have is the ability to cycle through all of these and loop through and see which one you're doing. For extra credit, if you set up a another variable inside your um, do whiles, you're going to have to change these to while loops and then concatenate these with using a or or and and then you're also going to have to use a input at the beginning to say which method you want to run using a number system and checking it with a number system to skip exactly to the one that you want to do that would be great I'll give extra credit for that um, it is a great way to handle the program a lot better because this is very sloppy going through and having to go through all the methods just to get one specific method with that being said though when you're testing a method you should always have that method on top because then it's the first one you're working on let's just take a look at the things that you are have to do to create another method so let's take the substring one which takes in two integers I'm going to copy the substring from slash to slash. I'm going to put this on the top of the method, top of the program, and let's call our new method Fenso method, just in this, as an example, and it's only going to take in an integer x, int x. So let's assume this is a method. What I need to do is I need to follow the directions on the box for string program directions. First thing I want to do is copy and paste a similar method. So my similar method is this. I want to replace substring with fenso method in every location that substring is at, which will be usually three positions. Next I want to do is replace old method name with new method name, which I already did. That was step two. Step three is create a variable for each parameter. Now I already have I already have one variable that I'm using, but it's defined below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to declare another variable int fenso great equals zero. And I'm gonna be replacing start with fenso great. Start with fenso great on all the location starts at. Next, I'm going to set up the input for each variable. Well, I already have the input for each variable right here, but I don't need the input for this end variable, and so I want to delete end out of the picture. Create the debug code, which I already did. I pasted it right here. I, I'm debugging the word and the number, which is the two things that are used in the string method that does not exist. I'm going to change the questions asked to the user, which means, what is your string for Fenso method? That's good, because I already changed it here. That's good. And then what is your favorite number? Change the method output and the method call to be correct, which I already did down here by deleting the end. And then check output with a good and bad value, which I would have to compile and run, but this won't work because Fenso method does not exist. But that's all you have to do to make a two parameter into a single int parameter 
and basically you just repeat this process for the five methods that you want to implement into your program and then you'll be all done for documentation purposes all I want is a name date period pre post summary and pre and post have three things each that's pretty much it and have a good one good luck on the program and I will see you later